good morning i welcome you to the session of ice engine and gas turbine and today we will discuss about the engine operating characteristics mean effective pressure and we will see uh, how we can define different efficiency terms in the context of ice engine operation and more importantly we need to define two important parameters that is the air fuel ratio and the specific fuel consumption in fact today uh, we will discuss about the engine operating characteristics and if we try to recall that in my last lecture we have discussed about the valve timing diagram and uh, so this is valve timing diagram and again uh, I will try to draw the valve timing diagram today and for that we need to schematic we need to know the schematic of the internal combustion engine. In fact, uh, we have discussed the valve timing diagram in the last lecture uh, using this schematic depiction. So, Now, this is exhaust manifold, exhaust uh, manifold, this is exhaust valve, this is intake valve and this is intake manifold. and there will be one small modification if it is a four stroke SI engine that means this is the carburetor and which is used to supply homogeneous mixture of air and fuel into the cylinder and so this is air plus fuel mixture and it is coming through the intake manifold and uh, entering into the engine cylinder and this is the exhaust valve. So, now if we try to, so what we have discussed that uh, if it is the, I mean if it is a four stroke SI engine also you need to uh, Now, the you know another important part that is external agent this spark plug which is required to initiate combustion for the SI engine. So, we have seen that there are four different strokes intake, compression, power and the exhaust. Now, what is happening in the internal in the engine cylinder? So, the air fuel mixture that is known as charge which is you know inducted during intake stroke into the cylinder and that charge is compressed during the compression stroke. At the end of the compression stroke we have discussed that the spark plug switch is on and it initiates the combustion and the compressed charge at the end of the compression stroke upon you know which, which, taking help from the spark plug you know take part the you know rather I can say the entire charge is uh, now in a position to have Combustion, we will discuss in a greater detail that uh, what are the different issues to have a very smooth combustion, to have efficient combustion, but at, at the end of the compression stroke, the compressed, compressed charge in a position to uh, you know uh, uh, I can say ignite if I switch on the spark plug and then uh, that the you know we have discussed that high pressure that is high pressure, high temperature, the gas will create a thrust on the piston face. Uh, after the combustion process and the it will allow that high pressure of the gas rather high pressure high temperature of the gas will try to rather 
we will create thrust and it will allow the piston to travel from top dead center to the bottom dead center. So, this is BDC and this is the TDC. Now, what is happening essentially in the engine cylinder is there is a continuous change in volume and pressure during different strokes. So, valve timing diagram we have discussed that we have tried to map the thermodynamic states of the you know charge or the compression combustion product at the end of different strokes and that is what we have discussed in the last lecture that is PV diagram. So, if we try to recall that moment of the piston is restricted between these two points that is the top dead center and the bottom dead center. So, this is VBDC and this is VTDC. So, the moment is restricted between these two points. So, volume will be changing from VDC to TDC and accordingly pressure will change. Now, if you try to recall that at the beginning of the intake stroke, so at the beginning of the intake stroke, so say this is this is the atmospheric pressure, say this is P atm. Now, during intake stroke as the piston moves from TDC to BDC, a pressure difference is created between the you know uh, I can say between the carburetor and the gas cylinder inside the cylinder and that pressure difference is the driving force to have a flow of air fuel mixture into the cylinder. Now, so pressure because in this valve timing diagram we are trying to map the pressure and volume of the combustion product or the charge uh, uh, during different strokes. So, at the beginning of the intake stroke rather the at the piston starts traveling from TDC to BDC pressure in the cylinder becomes lesser than the atmospheric pressure and that is the pressure difference which is responsible for the movement of for the transport of the flow of charge from carburetor into the cylinder. So, this pressure is less than the atmospheric pressure slightly less than the atmospheric pressure. So, pressure during intake stroke during entire intake stroke become slightly lesser than the atmospheric pressure. I cannot say the pressure will remain constant, but uh, pressure will be lesser than the atmospheric pressure. Now, when piston is at BDC at the end of the compression at the end of the intake stroke, what will happen? Now, the intake valve will be closed and exhaust valve is remaining closed already. Now, then the movement of the piston from BDC to TDC will try to compress the charge which is inducted which is you know taken which is introduced into the cylinder during the intake stroke and so the compression process starts when piston starts traveling from the BDC and we have discussed that the compression process is represented by the uh, you know reversible adiabatic process that is the, that is by an isentropic process. What will happen? So, during compression stroke volume will reduce and pressure will increase. Now, we need to know what is the pressure and volume at the end of the compression stroke and that is what we are trying to map over here. So, the pressure and volume will volume will in decrease and pressure will increase and as I said it is represented by the reversible adiabatic process. Now, when piston reaches at TDC that is at the end of the compression stroke, what do we do? We switch on the spark plug and uh, the spark plug is responsible for the entire combustion to take place within the engine cylinder by initially igniting the charge. Now, the moment when piston reaches at TD TDC that we will discuss that when the spark plug switched on uh, whether it is on exactly when piston reaches at TDC or it is switched on when piston is slightly away from TDC those issues we will be discussing when we are discussing about different cycles. Now, for the timing you should know the moment when piston reaches at TDC the spark plug switched on combustion will be there and because of the combustion there will be again high pressure rise and temperature rise. So, pressure will go high. So, this is the you know point and pressure will go high and the pressure high pressure and high temperature will create a thrust on the piston face and that force will try to you know push the piston from TDC to BDC that is nothing but the power stroke we have discussed. So, now what will happen because of the movement from because of the movement of the cylinder of the piston from TDC to BDC 
the volume will increase again the volume of what volume of the combustion product volume of the gas combustion gas that will increase and the pressure will fall. So, uh, that again that process is represented by the reversible adiabatic process that is by an isentropic process and it will be like this and so this is the process. Now, when piston reaches at BDC that is end of the power stroke, next stroke is the exhaust stroke. So, the cylinder is now filled up with the combustion gas, both the valves are closed, what do we need to do? So, we need to open the exhaust valve and when the piston is again coming back from BDC to TDC because of the movement of the piston, the, the movement of the piston will try to push out the combustion gas that is there in the cylinder. And what will happen again? The volume will decrease because the gas volume will be decreased, but it is not compressed because exhaust valve is open. So, gas will try to leave out from the engine cylinder through the exhaust uh, manifold into the ambience. Now, the volume will decrease and again, but in this case, pressure will not increase because exhaust valve is open and eventually the, the cycle will be repeated and will be the again in a state for the new intake stroke. So, what will happen? pressure will automatically fall to the ambient pressure and volume will decrease. So, this is entire the valve timing diagram that what we have discussed in the last lecture. Now, we need to know exactly when we should open the intake and exhaust valve to execute four different processes that we have discussed now. So, see during intake stroke as I, as I said the during intake stroke intake valve will remain open, exhaust valve will be closed. Now, should we open intake valve exactly when piston starts moving from TDC to BDC or it is required to open the intake valve when piston is you know slightly you know I can say close to TDC during the exhaust stroke. So, what is what is done intake valve is allowed to open when piston is here that is when piston is very close to TDC say I am denoting this point by A. So, this A the point when intake valve is the point when intake valve begins to open. So, it is not the case that piston will start mo mo you know travel from TDC and at that moment we should open the intake valve. Instead, intake valve is allowed to open when piston is slightly away from the TDC during the exhaust stroke and we will discuss the you know what why we need to open the intake valve when piston is slightly away from the TDC during the uh, exhaust stroke. Uh, now, the now so this is the case. So, the valve is open, the intake valve will remain open until the piston reaches up to the BDC. So, that will remain open. Now, the exhaust valve should be closed when the intake valve you know when the intake stroke starts. But again, this is not the case because that I will discuss again the you know uh, uh, the issues rather implications of all these you know uh, points. Now, when the when the piston starts traveling from TDC, the moment when piston start travel you know from TDC towards VDC, idea is that at that point of time intake valve should be rather intake valve will be allowed to open and exhaust valve will be allowed to close. Now, but this is not the case exhaust valve is still remaining open until the piston you know travels away from the TDC and when the piston is slightly away from the TDC during the intake stroke then exhaust valve is closed. So, this is B. So, B is closing of the uh, closing of the exhaust valve. 
that means when piston is slightly away from the TDC during exhaust stroke intake valve is allowed to open when piston is slightly away from the TDC during intake stroke then you know exhaust valve is allowed to close and so what we can see this is the period so this is the time period this is the time period where both the valves are remaining open when both the valves remaining open. So, that is what we have seen. Now, when piston is at BDC at the end of the intake stroke, now what do what what will be what is the you know step what, what are the steps you need to follow. Now, intake valve we have open at the at A. Now, intake valve is remaining open until the piston reaches at BDC. So, when piston start now traveling from BDC to TDC for during the compression stroke, we should now at, at, at B the exhaust valve is closed. So, exhaust valve will remain closed now because we are trying to compress the charge which we have taken during intake stroke. So, ideally intake valve should be closed at the moment when piston starts traveling from BDC to TDC the, at, during the compression stroke, but it is not done. So, that means intake valve is allowed to remain open uh, until piston travels little bit away from the BDC. So, that means th this is the point, this is the point say I am telling C. So, C, C is the point when intake valve is closed. Right, right, right. So, I can say intake valve closes. intake valve closes. So, ideally the intake valve should be closed the moment when piston start traveling from BDC to TDC at the beginning of the compression stroke, but it is not done in practice piston rather intake valve is you know uh, allowed to remain open until piston travels little bit away from the BDC during uh, compression stroke. We will discuss again I am telling the consequences of this you know kind of of these issues. Now, so now both the valves are closed, intake valve is closed and also the exhaust valve is closed. So, now uh, piston is traveling towards the TDC, compression process will be there and when piston reaches very you know I can say very close to TDC then spark plug switch is on. So, this is the point say I am telling this is D. So, D, D is spark plug switch is on. Now, that is our objective is. So, the spark plug will be uh, you know excited so that it will try to ignite the charge or the compressed charge at the end of the compression stroke. What will happen? Because of the combustion, combustion is nothing but exothermic reaction. So, it will it leads to a huge generation of heat and because of what the pressure and temperature of the gas that is of the charge rather I can say a combustion gas will increase and that will create a th thrust and because of what again piston will travel back from TDC to BDC. Now, as I said that when piston is traveling back from TDC to BDC during power stroke, now what will happen? Ideally, when piston reaches at BDC, the exhaust valve will be will be rather exhaust valve will open. Uh, this is the case because next stroke is exhaust stroke. So, the combustion gas that is there inside the cylinder will uh, we need to uh, you know expel out those combust uh, combustion gases. Now, but in reality what is done? It is not uh, closed the I mean it is not the time when exhaust valve be, will be closed when piston reaches at VDC rather exhaust valve is the exhaust valve you know starts closes when piston is slightly away from VDC that is E. So, this E is the point when exhaust valve 
begin to closes. So, uh, that means intake exhaust valve is not allowed to close exactly when piston reaches at BDC. Instead, it is you know the exhaust valve you know is allowed to you know close when piston is little bit away from BDC during the power stroke. And next stroke is the exhaust stroke. That is that is so. This is the power stroke. Uh, when uh, the exhaust valve begins to close, that means I can say in exhaust valve, I can say exhaust valve closes, not uh, exhaust valve closes, and 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 then the when piston is at BDC, then slight I mean since exhaust valve is you know exhaust valve start no this exhaust valve opens not closes exhaust valve you know opens exhaust valve opens sorry. So, when piston is slightly away from BDC during uh, the power stroke exhaust valve is allowed to open. So, that the combustion the gas inside the cylinder the you know which is there that gas will now try to rather the gas will try to leave out from the in engine cylinder towards the uh, you know through the exhaust manifold. Now, because of this reduction in gas pressure even when piston has not reached at BDC, it will try to reduce the resistance that the piston will face when it is coming from BDC to TDC during the exhaust stroke. So, the objective, objective of opening the uh, exhaust valve when piston is slightly away from BDC is to reduce the gas pressure inside the cylinder. So, that the piston uh, when uh, when traveling from PDC to TDC during the exhaust stroke will encounter will experience less resistance. So, that we need to borrow less amount of power from the flywheel that we will discuss in a greater detail. So, for the timing we have seen that that closing and opening of intake and exhaust valves are not exactly at the point when piston start traveling from TDC to BDC or BDC to TDC. Because uh, there are many issues we will be discussing at least we have discussed about the point E that the objective is to reduce the gas pressure inside the cylinder. So, that the piston will face will experience less resistance while coming back from BDC to TDC during the exhaust stroke fine. Important point over here that we have identified that A to B A intake valve begins to open, but still exhaust valve is remaining open because objective is to you know uh, uh, combustion product will leave out and the that means during the region A to B where both the valves are remaining open and this is known as valve overlapping region and this is known as you know called valve overlapping. So, this is known as valve overlap. valve overlap. So, this is the you know engine operating characteristics indicator diagram valve timing diagram sometimes it is known as also indicator diagram. That is the opening and closing of intake and exhaust valves during different strokes that we have you know understood till now. Okay. So, with this we next uh, try to see uh, what are the different other terms that means when we try to you know specify the output from the engine because our objective is to know the uh, output from the engine. We are providing input to the engine because we are providing fuel air of course, and fuel is having you know th that is called you know uh, the chemical energy that we are uh, supplying to the engine. Now, uh, out of this energy we are getting power uh, work output from the engine. So, we need to know how we can what is the I mean percentage output of the uh, in terms of the energy. So, we are supplying energy into the engine to operate the engine and out of that input energy we are getting output energy in terms of the work output. Now, we need to know uh, the efficiency that is at the cost of that input energy what is the recovery of the energy because energy cannot be again I am uh, if I try to go back 
to our you know class 12 knowledge that energy cannot be destroyed, it cannot be created. So, basically we are converting energy from one form to other. Now, at the cost of that input energy we are getting work. Now, now, uh, now, we need to know what is the percentage recovery of that energy and what is the loss of energy in to be precise. So, uh, we are supplying input energy to the engine and at the cost of that we are getting work output. So, the remaining part of the energy is getting lost. So, we need to know what is the percentage loss and from there we can define different efficiencies. So, now we will try to discuss about the work that is very important work and again I will try to draw the schematic. So, So, this is VDC, this is TDC, exhaust manifold, intake manifold and this is spark plug that we have leveled in the last slide. Now, the piston is uh, if I try to draw the piston, piston face is like this, this is kind of right circular cylinder. and this is the piston face. So, this is piston face and uh, rings are provided, piston rings are provided essentially to save the piston from excessive frictional uh, effect. So, uh, depending upon the uh, engine uh, capacity, the number of pistons are uh, provided whether it will be 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, what we have seen that at the you know end of the compression stroke, uh, we ignite the charge with taking help from the spark plug if it is SI engine or if it is CI engine, the, the thermodynamic stress of the uh, compressed air itself is good enough to initiate combustion when the fuel is injected into the cylinder through a fuel nozzle. Now, because of this combustion, there will be a huge release of heat and temperature and pressure of the combustion, gas, combustion gases will be high. Now, that high pressure, high temperature gas will try to create a thrust on the piston face. So, now we have drawn the piston face. So, now the uh, force will be acting, a uh, force uh, will be acting on the piston face and because of that force F, piston will travel uh, from TDC to BDC and that is the power stroke that you have seen. So, that means, if we try to uh, I can say uh, what is the work output, what do you mean by that? So, so, that is the case. So, work output from the engine. So, that means, I can say the work output is the result is the result of a force F acting through the distance, acting through a distance. Say if it is uh, X, so because of this force F, piston will travel from TDC to BDC that means, it is we are getting work output at the shaft. So, that means, the that means it is nothing but a force F acting through a distance. So, if I try to represent this work F W, this is nothing but F into d x, if d x is a small displacement. Now, uh, I can write what is F, if the pressure you know at the end of the compression stroke rather at the uh, rather I can say at the end of the combustion, if pressure is P and the area of the piston face is AP, area is you know I can say AP, then P into AP into dx. 
So, this is nothing but F and this is force. So, I can write that that pressure P, P is the pressure in the combustion chamber or P is the pressure inside the cylinder at the end of the combustion process. Now, P into F into d x that is the work done that is that is that is what we have mathematically represented. Now, if we try to write W is P A P into d x. Now, this A P into d x is nothing but P into d V. So, this d V is the differential volume displaced by the piston. So, because of this force piston travels a distance d x say d x and if the volume is d V that means D, that is AP into dx. So, as if the DB, as if dv is the differential volume differential volume displaced by the piston as it travels a distance dx. So, as if the movement the movement of the piston is displacing a volume dv differential volume as it travels by by a distance dx. So, now W is P d V. So, if I go to the next slide, I can write W is P into d V. See, if we now try to recall the indicator diagram that we have drawn. So, indicator diagram, valve timing diagram that gives us an information about the change in pressure and volume inside the cylinder because of the different strokes that we have seen. To execute different strokes, of course, we need to uh, uh, we need to have mechanical arrangement, we need to open different valves at different times. Also, we need to have one external agent like spark plug that may not that is not there for the SI engine, but that is important and essential uh, uh, part for the SI engine. So, if we try to recall that the volume and pressure, volume of course, the change in volume is restricted between these two points that is VBDC and TDC. So, this is VBDC and this is VTDC. So, uh, we have seen that. Uh, So, this is the valve timing diagram. I am not going to level again here all the you know valve opening and closing points, but but at least we have understood from our previous discussion that uh, that uh, the, the valves are open uh, valves are open and closed at different times. So, this is the case. So, basically from this diagram it is clear that during the intake compression and also exhaust we are supplying energy to the cylinder to the wheel rather I can say we are supplying energy to the piston for, for its movement, but only the power stroke is the stroke from where we are getting power output from the engine. And so, this PV diagram will rather is a, to will, this is an indication to the to measure the work output that we are getting from the engine. So, again I am telling, so this is the intake stroke, this is the intake stroke and uh, uh, so, if I try to draw the area under this PV diagram, we will get the work output. Now, out of these four different strokes, again I am telling only power stroke is the stroke from where we are getting power. This work output PDV is now, if I know the change in volume, that is nothing but change in volume between BDC and TDC, but if I try to calculate the pressure. I mean change in pressure from this uh, 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 from this diagram we can calculate the work output. Since uh, in most of the cases engines are multi cylinder it is convenient to write you know specific work output that is w, w by m that is nothing but p into small dv. So, this is because of uh, since engines are multi cylinder. So, this is work and volume is replaced. Uh, work and volume uh, replaced by uh, replaced I can say replaced with the specific work replaced with their specific values. So, if it is multi cylinder engine it is always convenient to write in terms of their specific properties. So, now question is 
the work which we are getting during power stroke that is only the stroke that is only the power output from the engine and work which we are providing to the piston during other strokes those are the uh, I mean I can say uh, we are you know we are supplying power from the uh, from one source to the engine uh, to the engine uh, to the piston. Now one thing to note over here that the power which you are the work which you are getting at the piston phase that power if I try to go back to my previous slide it is true that when the work we are getting at the piston phase that is the PDV. Now that work is not obtained at the crankshaft because of the different factors like frictional effect to overcome because piston is moving continuously to overcome the frictional losses also there are many you know uh, bearings uh, uh, what there will have friction. So, the work which you are getting at the piston phase is known as indicated work. So, work which is obtained at the piston phase is W i that is indicated work and work which is available at the crank shaft at the crank crank shaft is WB that is the brake work. So, that means work which is produced at the on the top of the piston that is the indicated work, but what work which is available at the crank shape that is the brake work. So, definitely W B will be less than W i by an amount and this W i is nothing but uh, W B plus the energy which is the, the work which is used to overcome the frictional losses and other parasitic load because we need to run engine, we need to run uh, because we will discuss that there are uh, uh, issues uh, there are points which we need to supply energy to run all those things. So, those are not known as parasitic loads. So, this is nothing but the W I can say that uh, frictional plus parasitic. So, indicated power is equal to the brake power plus the frictional power and the parasitic, parasitic power. So, now what can we tell that the work which is available at the crankshaft that is that is what we actually get to run the engine uh, to uh, as a uh, work output from the engine that is always less than the indicated work. So, this is indicated. So, mechanical efficiency is defined eta mechanical that is nothing but the work which we get at the crankshaft because this is responsible to run uh, the you know uh, I mean to overcome the load that we are uh, we, we give to the engine. But see W B of course is always less than the indicated work W I by an amount frictional plus parasitic load. So, this ratio of these two work output is known as the mechanical efficiency. So, this is the mechanical efficiency of the internal combustion engine that is W B plus uh, W B by W I. Now, uh, another one important efficiency which is defined in fact we will define a few important parameters in the context of engine operation like torque what is the power of power all those things. But at least uh, in this context I will discuss one thing again that if I go back to my previous slide where we have written now we have seen that the pressure is continuously changing in the engine cylinder as piston travels from BDC to TDC or TDC to BDC. TDC, to BDC. So, pressure and volume is continuously changing. So, but to have you know I mean uh, we can consider I mean when we calculate the indicated work or brake work we always try to calculate that that uh, I mean mean effective pressure because instead of because pressure is continuously changing. So, it is very difficult to calculate pressure instantaneously otherwise we need to go for the you know numerical simulations, uh, but, but instead we can consider the mean effective pressure the concept of mean effective pressure that is why I came into the picture. So, this is mean effective pressure into delta V. So, this is the change in volume. So, this is the change in volume. So, the concept of mean effective pressure came into the picture only to you know uh, I can say the overcome the 
complexity that is there as the pressure changes com continuously as the piston travels from BDC to TDC or TDC to BDC. So, this is uh, uh, where delta V is nothing but V BDC minus V TDC. So, this we know the delta V because ultimately uh, 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 volume will be changing between these two uh, locations that we have discussed many times. So, W i is nothing but this. Now, uh, if I if I try to calculate, so W i indicated work output that is nothing but indicated mean effective pressure into delta V. Therefore, indicated mean effective pressure I can say this is the actual definition is W i by uh, delta V. Similarly, if I try to if we know the break work that is W B by delta V this is uh, B M E P. So, break mean effective pressure and indicated mean effective pressure uh, these two are uh, defined uh, to calculate the brake power and the indicated power from the engine. So, uh, this is the mean effective pressure and now finally, I would like to uh, you know discuss one another efficiency that is very important that is known as volumetric efficiency because why volumetric efficiency is very important. See we are supplying uh, uh, we are supplying air plus fuel mixture into the cylinder uh, rather we need to supply always air whether it is CI and SI engine. We are supplying air fuel mixture together during intake stroke to the engine cylinder and only air in case of a CI engine during the intake stroke. Now, the supply air is very essential that the amount of air which we are supplying into the engine cylinder is very essential for the efficient conversion that we will discuss while we will be discussing about the, about the thermochemistry. So, the amount of air that we are supplying into the engine cylinder, so uh, that air is stoichiometric air. So, that is the calculated mass that, that, that is the calculated air that we are supplying to have the efficient conversion because we are supplying you know air fuel mixture in a right proportion. So, the amount of air we are supplying that is required to have the complete combustion if we supply less amount of air than that than the calculated value uh, then the combustion will not be efficient instead we will get the less amount of work output. So, what is done one efficiency is defined that is not known as volumetric efficiency. volumetric efficiency so that means when we are supplying say we are designing that for the part particular proportion air fuel mixture that we will discuss the definition of air fuel mixture and specific fuel consumption in the next class but uh, uh, because of the time limitation i cannot discuss today but at least we should know when you are supplying a right proportion of air fuel mixture to have efficient combustion for that particular fuel that means for that particular fuel that amount of fuel we need to supply this amount of air that and we are designing accordingly so that the right proportion of the air will be introduced during the intake stroke. Uh, now because of the because air is moving through the intake manifold of course there are valves and also if it is SI engine the carburetor is there. So, carburetor is responsible for the homogeneous to, uh, responsible for the you know uh, to, uh, I mean uh, homogeneous mixture of the air and fuel uh, that will be supplied into the engine cylinder. Now, because of the you know uh, carburetor and also the air will flow in through the intake manifold into the cylinder. So, we cannot trivially ignore the frictional effect that will be there. So, considering all these aspects the supplied air would not be equal to the calculated air. So, supplied air will be always less than the calculated air because of this effect and as a result. So, we are defining volumetric efficiency that is nothing but m dot a divided by uh, rho a into v d into n I can say rho a into v d. So, see v d is the uh, displacement volume and this rho a is the density of the air. So, when the piston is traveling back from TDC to uh, coming from TDC to VDC that is the displacement volume VD. Now, that volume multiplied by density that is the actual amount of air we are supposed to get for the efficient combustion and that is what we need to design. Now, this is not the, but MA is not that e equal to rho A into VD because MA will be always lesser than that and that is why this volumetric efficiency is coming into the picture. Now, we can write it in a different form that uh, I can write N into uh, M dot A divided by rho a into v d into n where n is the uh, number of revolution per cycle number of 
revolution per cycle and n is nothing but the engine speed. So, we can write it in a uh, different mathematical form. So, what is the conclusion that the cylinder during, during the intake stroke we are supposed to get rho a, rho a times V d amount of air into the cylinder, but we are not getting, we are getting different uh, amount and that is because of the frictional effect into the uh, uh, pathways and also because of the presence of carburetor it will try to create resistance for the incoming flow to uh, I mean uh, uh, resistance to the flow. So, because of this uh, because of this uh, reason we are not getting the amount of air which you are supposed to get and because of that we are defining one efficiency that is known as volumetric efficiency. So, volumetric efficiency will be again always less than 1 at that the. So, this is the ideal mass flow rate of air and this is the actual mass flow rate of air. So, this m a so this is actual mass flow rate of air actual mass flow rate of air. Uh, I can say mass flow uh, actual mass flow mass of air into the engines huh. mass flow actual mass flow of air per cycle because ultimately we are we are uh, giving it in a different shape. So, this is the actual mass flow of air per cycle and this is the ideal one this is the ideal one and this actual one is always less than this and that is why this volumetric efficiency into the volumetric efficiency is coming into the picture and this will be always less than this less than less than one. So, with this I stop my discussion today and we will continue our discussion in the next class. Thank you. Mm -hmm.